Well, hello everyone, it's Karen McDermott Rolfe, Independent Advisor with Creative Memories, and happy National Scrapbook Day. Today is the day when scrapbookers all over the world celebrate our love for memory keeping and scrapbooking. Creative Memories created this event way back in 1994, and we have been celebrating ever since. Advisors um, with Creative Memories will typically celebrate this event any time in the spring. So many of us have already had our National Scrapbook Day events, or some will be even stretched into the summer. But today is the official National Scrapbook Day. And um, recently, back in on April 20th, I I held my virtual National Scrapbook Day workshop. Now, if you missed that workshop, but you would still like to have access to the exclusive layouts that I created using the NSD customer bundle, you can still get those instructional handouts and recorded videos by going to my blog at karencrops.com and going to the On Demand Page Class section. And there you can purchase those instructional materials and I'd be happy to get them to you. Right now, the gals um, who participated with me in, National, in Virtual National Scrapbook Day are finishing up those layouts. They're doing a great job with them. A few are making some tool substitutions. A few are even using different materials with the layouts and they're all coming together really beautifully. And I think one of the great things about these layouts is that I used up almost every piece of that NSD customer bundle. So you're not going to have any left, any, you're just gonna have a little tiny bit of scrap paper left and some, some cardstock left over. But other than that, not very much at all. So that's really great. The, um, the layouts are layered, they're intricate. And I, um, on each layout, I used either the fresh flower punch or the spring leaves frame punch in a unique way. So I show you some great ideas for using those two punches that are a little bit outside of the box. So that's another great reason um, to go ahead and purchase that on-demand page class. Now today though, I am here for my monthly technique layout and challenge. So I'm going to share a scrapbooking technique with you and then challenge all of you to use the technique to create your layout and then share a photo of your layout with me on Facebook in my group Karen's Croppers for an entry into my May door prize drawing. And I so appreciate any of your purchases through my Creative Memories website link at creativememories.com backslash user backslash Karen and that's Karen with a Y. And I offer a generous customer rewards program. So let's look at the, the technique and the layout today that I'm sharing. For this layout, I used the National Scrapbook Day Project Recipe Kit from Creative Memories. So I just used one sheet of paper from the kit, and I used both the front and back sides, and then I used a few of the stickers. So the technique is really, it's cutting the circle out of your paper, and then out of the remaining paper, use a shape punch to punch a bunch of shapes to go around the circle, okay? So for this one, let me show you what happened. And again, it's a great way to use up paper and not have a lot of scraps left. So this was the one sheet of paper that I used from the NSD Project Recipe Kit. I punched the flowers and used the flowers on the blue side, as I did with the circle. And then I used the back side with the tangerine gingham for the centers of my flowers. So I really love that. Um, I've used up all of that paper and I have a super cute layout here featuring my granddaughter. Um, I used the a blue pen. This is our blue uh, dual tip pen from Creative Memories to add some faux stitching here to kind of brighten it up and to fill in some of the extra space on the layout. I really liked it on the white cardstock as a background versus some of the other sheets of paper that were in the NSD kit because the white really brightened it up. These papers can have a little bit of a, a dusty um, look to them and I thought that it was just, I don't know, I just liked it on the white. I liked how the white brightened it and added that element of brightness. And so then by adding that faux stitching around the outside and around the circle, and around the centers of my flowers, I was able to add some really cute detail. And then I drew some lines here that I will add some journaling later. I'm gonna keep my journaling private for my family for now. So I will add the journaling to my layout in those spaces. 
I used the Fresh Flower Punch. This is a current punch with Creative Memories. And I made the flower look a little bit different by um, punching a larger circle to put in the middle. The middle for this flower is pretty small, but I like the look to change it up a little bit by putting a bigger center in that flower. And so I used the old circle shape maker punch from Creative Memories. This is old company Creative Memories. And this, I used the smallest one and it's three quarters of an inch. So it's a three quarter inch circle, okay, that I used for my centers here. And then I just matted some photos and added a few little stickers with foam squares and I have my layout completed. So again, I want you to look at your shape punches to see what shape punches that you have that would work great with this technique. Two of them that come to the top of my mind are the compass punch. Now this was a new punch that came out earlier in the year with our Passport to Adventure collection, our travel collection. So you can see how all of those little compasses would look great in a circle going around your layout. So I would love to see somebody use the compass punch to do this technique. But today I am going to use the cap and diploma punch. And we're gonna just use the cap part of the punch and we're going to punch a bunch of graduation caps to go around the circle on my layout. So to create my layout today, I am going to use a sheet of paper from the You Graduated paper pack and I'm going to use this sheet here with the little graduation caps. Now I'm going to do it kind of reverse than what I did with my sample layout. I'm going to use the designer paper as my background and then I'm going to use a sheet of black cardstock to cut my circle and to do my punched pieces. Okay, so let's get started. So I have a 12 by 12 sheet of black cardstock here, and I have my jumbo circle cutting pattern. And I'm going to place it here on the bottom right corner of the cardstock to conserve that cardstock. And I'm going to use my red blade on the inside edge. And I'm just going to make sure that both of those prongs are in the cutting groove before I start to cut. I'm placing my hand kind of diagonally across that pattern to hold it in place so it doesn't slip on me. And then I'm just going to, whoops, it did shift on me a little bit. I was going to make sure that I cut through all the way before I moved my paper. Okay. If um, I move the pattern and I haven't cut all the way through, then it's going to be pretty hard to line it up exactly where I had it the first time to recut. So always give it a little jiggle to make sure you cut all the way through. So now we're just ready to do a bunch of punching. And it's really great because we're just going to use the remaining part of this black cardstock to punch some of these graduation hats. And I'm just going to hold the, um, the punch upside down here so I can kind of see what I'm doing, positioning that cap on places here to punch. Now, if I were really careful, I could try to avoid punching out the diploma part of the punch because I don't really, I don't want the diplomas for this layout. But um, I'm not going to take that time to do that now. Instead, I'm just simply going to punch quickly here, okay? I will save these little diplomas. I could use these as, you know, party favor or a little decoration. I could tuck them inside of a graduation card, or I could use them to create a card. And I did, as one of the content contributors for the Creative Memories blog, I did create some graduation cards for Creative Memories using the You Graduated uh, paper embellishments and the cap and diploma punch. Those have not been published yet on the CM blog, but I would keep a lookout for them as they'll probably hit the blog sometime here in May. Now to get a head start from my video, I did already previously punch some of the little caps. So let me just start placing them around to get my spacing and to see how many that I'll need to use. I'm going to be careful here that I'm placing the tassels are all going the same direction just to give it a more um, you know uniform look 
And this is also going to help me to get the spacing of my circle because when I adhere the circle down, I want it right in the center of the paper. So I could use a ruler. I could kind of measure it out a little bit and get that exact center. But I think I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. There are kind of rows of these caps. One, two, three, four. Four, and so like this. And I think I need to come over. And I think this right here is about the center by just kind of looking at the pattern on the paper. So I think I'm just going to hold it in place since I've identified the center. I'm going to pull it up and place some of my repositional tape right underneath the circle there to hold it down. There we go. Now my caps got a little out of place. I just kind of like to get everything lined up first before I started hearing. This is going to help me, you know, again with the spacing and seeing how many let me take one out and see how that looks if I could just spread them out a little bit more. I'm going to come, oh, maybe almost a quarter inch away from the circle. There, I think I like that better with um, one, one less. There's a little bit more space in between them. Looks like there's more space between the, the caps on the left side than there, there were on the right, so just kind of adjusting. Again, you could take a, a ruler and really figure that out if you these <laughs> for the exact placement of all of these, um, but I'm not going to do that. I think that looks pretty good right there. So I'm going to adhere them with foam squares. I wonder if I can get by with just one small foam square on each cap. I think I can, and that's what I'm going to do. So it's going to take me a minute here to go around and do this. The rest of the layout will go together fairly quickly. I'll just need some mats. And then I'm going to use some embellishments from the You Graduated Embellishment Pack. Um, I um, also was a designer that created the, the sample graduation layouts for Creative Memories this year. Um, there's been one on the blog so far as of this recording, and there should be maybe two more that um, Creative Memories might publish yet probably a little bit closer to graduation season they're waiting for, but anyway, oh, I lost my train of thought there. What I was going to say is that I really love the embellishments for the You Graduated collection. Um, if I were purchasing, my recommendation is just to purchase the embellishments and you could skip the stickers with this collection. Um, the, the embellishments are just really superb. They have foil, they have gold and silver foiling. They have really cute icons. They have some little, um, oh, little boxes with lines for journaling. Um, I just really like the embellishments a lot and I'm gonna use a few on this layout to decorate it. So that didn't take too long, did it? By elevating it, I like that. It really gives those little tassels um, kind of almost a little bit of movement, how they're popping up there off the page, right? So you're probably wondering exactly how many did I punch? Let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Sixteen, okay? So that was sixteen. And to get a head start, I've already uh, pre-cut some mats here. Let me give you the dimensions. I did double mat these. Um, this layout is going to be for my nephew, Johnny, who graduates this year from high school. 
and one of his school colors here is, is royal blue, blue so I'm going to use the Creative Memories blue and I did double mat it with some white cardstock. So I'm just trying to kind of guess here what types of photos I'm going to get from from my brother, my my sister-in-law. Probably, you know, there'll be a photo I would guess of John in his cap and gown, you know, standing maybe with his diploma. So I have the vertical photo. I'm guessing there'll be a family photo that'll probably be in the horizontal orientation. And then I have another square uh, box here for just some other photo that I could crop in. Maybe another photo of Johnny, again, zooming in with his diploma. So the blue mats are five inches by three and a quarter. Okay, so five inches by three and a quarter. And then the square one is three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then the white mats for the double mat, they are just an eighth of an inch smaller. So I'm just leaving the little hint of blue showing. I didn't want the blue to be overwhelming here because it kind of introduces a whole nother color because I do have a lot of gold and silver in these embellishments. So, you know, that's bringing a lot of different colors in and I thought just a little hint of blue will be nice. Okay. So again, the blue mats are five inches by three and a quarter, or three and three quarters, and then three and three quarters by three and three quarters. And then the white mats are an eighth of an inch shorter, smaller. So here's one of those little lined journaling boxes that's in the embellishment. Here's another fun one, the little graduate. Let's see, we have some really cool uh, balloon pieces, and again, that have the foiling and the silver and the gold. So, again, I'm just kind of placing it all, get, getting my spacing good. Let's see, I might come down a little bit. Well, maybe not. I think I'll layer this title, Graduation Day. Just layer it right there over the balloons. And then the graduate, I was thinking go right here with this photo. And then I have the, the journal box. So what do you think? That came together really quickly, didn't it? We like that, don't we? When they're quick, they're easy. It's a great technique for using tools we already have. So I know that um, if you guys are like me, you have quite a collection of these shape punches, different ones. Take a look at what you have and see what you can, what you can do. And share um, a photo of your layout with me in Karen's Croppers in my album. Go to my album section in Karen's Croppers and look for the, the latest technique album. That is where you're going to add your photo for the entry. Your photo must be in the album to receive an entry into the door prize drawing. And then while you're there in that um, the album section of Karen's Croppers, take a look at all of those technique albums that I have. They're... Um, Oh, gosh, I don't know what we on. This might be number 57 or 58. So that means there are a lot of techniques there in Karen's Croppers for you. So I love this simple um, technique. We like it when it's easy, when it's quick. Using the shape makers, again, you just use the, the jumbo circle pattern, cutting on the inside edge with that red blade to get your circle. And then do your punches with the remaining of your paper. And like you can do it here with um, designer paper in the background and punching with cardstock, or as I did with this layout, using the cardstock as the background and using one sheet of designer paper for your punches. All right, everybody, I cannot wait to see what you do with this with this quick and easy technique. So thanks again for visiting with me today.